Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all the champs. Hope you're having ball at home. You're eating all pakoras and every single thing. And I have an advice for you. Do not get fat. Eat less and think better. And also work hard, right? So without wasting much of your time, let's get started with today's topic. And this is where we left the last time. Olig B. Mumbai wins National Award for Pulse Polio Film. What we have understood so far is uh, that marketing is not only about publishing what you think can work, right? Publishing uh, whatever you hypothetically think. No, 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 I'm publishing this because this is going to work right uh, so it's exactly it's it's having some principles that you have to follow it's having some points that you need to follow and one of the major points that we do uh, before publishing any campaign is publish it as per the behavior of the consumer right depending on the market it depends completely on the market that you are targeting whether it's a niche you are targeting or you're targeting masses or a particular sector or a particular gender or a particular psychograph demograph so uh, it changes but yeah you have to understand once you know the consumer behavior uh, only then you'll be uh, able to successfully launch campaigns digitally right so let's move and start today's topic today's topic is sales being the rejection job so do not get confused between sales and marketing they are two different things but yeah they are attached to each other sales means completely selling taking money and marketing means making them making pe people aware about your brand uh, making sure that the brand reaches out to masses and uh, to someone that you are targeting and now uh, sales team has to be ready to face rejection right so I'll, I'll give you a one good example of marketing rejection not sales rejection for example if you're marketing uh, and your reach is you want to reach uh, say about one to two lakh people now when you end up reaching one to two lakh people over the internet you'll only have ten thousand out of those one to two lakh people visiting your website that means you'll only have 10 to 20 percent of tra traffic you'll not be able to extract more than 20 percent traffic out of one or two lakh people that your ad is reaching out to and after that uh, 10,000 people have visited your website doesn't mean they have uh, completely uh, you know become your customers or their potential leads no out of 10,000 only 15 to 20 percent will end up becoming your leads will end up signing in right signing up rather uh, registering themselves or signing up for an email or a monthly newsletter or a weekly newsletter so those uh, uh, 10 to 15 to 20 percent out of uh, you know out of 10,000 are now your leads they're not customers and those leads out of those leads 10, 15 to 20 percent will end up purchasing the product so this is how the cycle works but you need to be fond of rejection right uh, you know as I said earlier right so how do you know what is good unless you do something bad bad teaches you what is good right so we keep on doing in digital marketing uh, even if we do not understand the consumer behavior at the first go doesn't mean we'll stop we'll have to keep on trying keep on trying 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 till we achieve success and while achieving success we get experienced and and while getting experience we also understand the behavior of people no this is not the punchline that someone is going to or people are going to uh, you know uh, respond to I'll change my punchline I'll change my uh, campaign picture or the banner and or the video right so after that you'll see that sales is a rejection job right so you'll have to face rejection and you'll have to be ready to face rejection right and there is a good amount of difference between sales and marketing marketing is making people aware about your brand right for example I see I see a bank will run uh, you know a campaign to make you aware about certain policies and insurance policies and now only when you're impressed about certain policies will you go to bank or to the insurance company and ask the sales executive and thereby you will uh, the sales executive is someone who's going to take money and do all the transactions so anyone who's involved with transactions not the brand awareness and campaigning uh, is uh, basically as that of the sales team now what we marketers do we marketers can not stop the rejection right what we can do we can reduce the rejection rate I repeat we can reduce the rejection rate right if you see uh, Vazvan right so what is Vazvan made up of I'll say I'll make Gustaba I'll make a kebab right I want to eat a nice kebab now even if I take salt away from kebab right if I don't add salt to kebab the kebab 
will not be kebab anymore a rista and gustaba will not be rista and gustaba so uh, uh, that's the same case with marketing marketing uh, success is made up of uh, ingredients and those ingredients involve many things right uh, like the content uh, like uh, the structure of the website right how user friendly it is is your website guiding the user through right and is your campaign up to the date uh, or is your campaign having or delivering the message are people aware about your brand right or are you uh, raising campaigns as per your own hypothesis and assumptions right campaigns are not based on hypothesis and assumptions but after doing a nice consumer behavior research then we upload and publish our campaigns if you are doing all the things right right uh, then and only then you are going to make a marketing kebab which is success right so marketing is made up of many many different things and reducing the rejection rate is what our job as marketers is and we re reduce the rejection rate only by understanding consumer behavior first and then doing the rest of things right okay carry on so now uh, point number second is you cannot sell to everyone i'll add one more line here you cannot sell to everyone and i'll add one more line that you cannot sell everything to everyone let's take an example of amazon if you go to amazon you'll see that uh, when you go to fb or twitter or instagram you often see uh, amazon ads or flipkart ads right uh, but do they show you everything no they do not show you everything they show you a product from a particular product category or a particular range right that you may be interested in so they cannot show entire shop you'll be confused if you show the entire shop so that is the same case if you check uh, if you see all the hospitals around in kashmir the only private hospital working wonders and miracles in jammu and kashmir is um, in kashmir is a uh, kidney hospital why because uh, it's not a super speciality clinic uh, right super speciality clinics uh, they they uh, basically they don't make brand names right what they get do they invite some renowned and very good face doctors uh, once they uh, you know introduce renowned doctors people do not visit those hospitals but they visit those doctors right so what will happen if the doctors move out or die right so doctors move out patients also move out so uh, they are acquiring uh, their 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 way of acquiring customers is not very good right if i tell you to go to delhi fortis do you remember any doctor no uh let's say tata hospital right medanta so these are or batra hospital they are very good brand names where we remember these hospitals by brand names only not by of uh, a typical or or an any individual doctor right uh, so that's the same case that if you start doing business do not try and sell everything to everyone right in you know recognize your niche recognize the correct product for the correct niche and market correct product for the correct uh you know correct uh, niche or maybe if the product is meant for masses uh, or specific gender it recognize the demograph right recognize the psychograph recognize the ethnograph right so how to identify the right customer that the psychograph should match demograph right so uh, psychographic has to match the, the, the demographic right because uh, psychographic of uh, uh let's say about uh, a 60 year old man may not be as that of 25 30 year old man right so it differs ethnograph should mag match geograph you'll see examples of these in upcoming lectures inshallah let's move okay one of the great examples of uh, identifying the correct niche is maruti suzuki alto right it's con continuously believe me maruti suzuki from last 15 years is continuously working on reverse innovation and it's now the world's largest selling car what makes it one of the world's largest selling car is that they have not changed the price from last 15 years i still remember before 15 years maruti alto was around 3.5 lakh rupees and today it's around 3.7 to 3.8 lakh rupees so they have not changed the price right and they have not even uh, you know changed the niche right so they they keep on updating the same model they are applying reverse innovation right for the current uh, for the current niche they are having right so they don't want to lose it because they have recognized the market they have recognized their needs and their requirements and wants so uh, but yeah to give them a new taste they are updating the old model again and again so this is called reverse innovation right so because they don't want 
to sell a Maruti Alto to everyone. They want to sell it to a particular niche. Right? So once they have recognized it, they kept it alive for 15 years. And 15 years is a very, uh, you know, long duration in business, right? And this car from last 15 years has not seen decline phase. The moment Alto goes and reaches the decline phase, they update the product and it gets the J curve back. The moment it reaches the decline curve, they update it, they get, it, it gets the J curve back so this is how it works right okay if you're having any questions let me know in the comment section or you can message me or in the group right so let me know if you're having any questions so quote of the day spot your claim and amplify your message i keep on repeating this there is a claim out in the market there's a spot for you in the market please recognize the spot in the market do not recognize only jobs that you're looking for here and there recognize the spot in the market and believe in yourself launch that campaign right and and i'm going to teach you how and what to do if in case you are interested in creating a monopoly right and uh, that is going to be the next topic how to create monopoly by creating entry barriers right how do you create monopoly we create monopoly by doing nothing sitting back home and creating entry barriers right not sitting back home at least it requires hell amount of work and here is an entry barrier for you. It looks like Palestine wall, right? Uh, that it is Israel built, uh, right? Somehow, anyways, so let's carry on. Now when you build uh, barriers to entry, what you get, you do not offer any discount because you are the decider for price. You decide at which price you have to sell the product. Only people who are not going to buy are the people who say that I require it, but they cannot afford it, right? So as I said, the curve is always there, right? But uh, once you create monopoly, you cannot offer discount, no cutthroat competition because you create barriers to enter. You're not allowing anyone to come near to you. You do not allow anyone to have even a substitute for you, right? And you do not offer credits. That is the best thing in the business right once you have monopoly no credits no cutthroat no discount why because i've created an entry barrier now you'll say how to create entry barriers right is that your question right let me show you another example of barriers to entry you'll tell me no 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 it's not monopoly it's duopoly yes you can say even duopoly but coca-cola is still leading uh, and pepsi is also there but yeah leading uh, so you tell me uh, how do you create barriers to entry yes but brand loyalty has to be there economies of scale means production in a very large scale right produce it in such a large scale that the raw material that is used to manufacture these products or the product you're interested in uh, you get discount even for the last bit you purchase uh, geographical barriers that the product should not have any geographical barriers right so it is available everywhere in the world right so that is also there and being the first mover right if you think if you spotted the claim in the market and you say no this is something that the market requires mm -hmm. right so you have to do it as soon as possible be fast mover when you are fast mover only then you will become first mover right okay and there is uh, vertical integration also you have to you know uh, you have you have to have a proper channel a proper supply chain management channel and that's also there and patent patent is very imp important let's say about for example tomorrow if you happen to are you uh, or tomorrow if you end up producing or manufacturing uh, COVID-19 vaccinations and COVID-19 medications what is the first step that you are going to do get it verified now when you are sure that this medication and vaccination is going to cure or prevent COVID-19 what is the first step you will take now you are thinking of earning money no that's not the first step you are going to take the first step you will of course take is get your product license get the patent of your product so that someone does not copy the same molecular medicine that you are going to sell out in the market after you have taken the patent you become the legal custodian of that uh, we can say of that molecular medicine that you have made you know there are two kind of medicine generic is there molecular medicine is there right generic is paracetamol that you get it from everywhere and uh, you know there are many generic uh, pen top medicines right for stomach ache and every single thing uh, but yeah uh, if 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 you have heard of someone getting heart attack and you go into a hospital right and imagine someone is dying and you have to save him they'll ask you to buy a certain injection uh, maybe adrenaline 
right so you go out, go out and buy that injection and that injection will cost you around maybe um, say about 40 50000 rupees and you immediately pay 40 50000 rupees right why because you have to save someone's life that is molecular medicine right molecular medicine it, they'll give you on uh, cash no credits right uh, no cutthroat no discounts right so you're going to get it and you are basically uh, you know you have to buy it you don't have any other option right and uh, that's only possible uh, once you manufacture anything like that and then you take license copyright of that and take patent of that immediately take patent of that so that no one copies it okay how to create entry barriers right uh, I'll tell you just give me a moment I'll come back yeah so being the first mover, vertical integration, patent, geographical barriers, economies of scale and brand loyalty. Now how to create an entry barrier is what your question is. How do you create an entry barrier? Number one option to create an entry barrier and creating an entry barrier means creating a monopoly. Okay, number one, as I said, patent and licenses, whatever you manufacture, let it be uh, a very good curd or, or, or very tasty pickle, anything small or big, doesn't matter. But the moment you think you have manufactured something unique, please take patent and take license of that so that you get uh, to sell that product uh, at the price you want and, and without any discounts and every single thing. Example of generic and molecular medicine is already given right and R&D and trade center yeah we need to have our companies they do not have R&D centers right the moment even a small company or big company doesn't matter large scale or small scale companies uh, the moment companies have those R&D centers they keep on doing research and and making maybe even even an idea can be patented you know that so making those things an engineer can patent a design on the paper a civil engineer there are many things that you can make only when you have uh, your office and your office has R&D research and uh, you know research uh, division right so R&D division has to be there right so then then and only when you're having a research and development uh, will you be able to produce uh, you know uh, unique things and those unique things are known as trade secrets I would like to go back to previous slide do you know what coca-cola does coca-cola does not manufacture uh, coca-cola you know uh, uh, soda bottles right so they do not uh, manufacture it it's manufactured by the bottle company what they do they have their trade secret known as coca-cola syrup so they they get it manufactured by any bottle company and they add the right quantity of the syrup and that syrup is basically the trade secret of coca-cola and that that is already patented by even if you do a research and and you take out all the ingredients that coca-cola has used that is patented to coca-cola right so that's known as trade secret number second strong distribution network case study of nokia you know what nokia did nokia uh, initially there was a monopoly of nokia everyone knows everyone had uh, a nokia handset right so there was monopoly of nokia going on but they did not realize that the temperament of people has changed uh, the temperament has changed they have st stopped uh, you know looking for uh, hardware right they are more intimated towards software partner which is android and nokia failed to realize that and by the time nokia was doing monopoly they had a very poor uh, distribution network they were not giving much profit to stockists than to distributors than to retailers but yeah retailers they 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 were you know, they had to have nokia phone uh, in their showrooms because no one would ask for any other phone but Nokia phone if you're not having as a retailer so most probably you're losing a customer so the moment you know, there was no alternate retailers and and wholesalers they never had any alternative but Nokia yeah Motorola was somehow working only two to three sets of Motorola uh, were fa famous by that time so you all know that but yeah what happened after Vivo Oppo and then first Micromax came and they created a very strong distribution network and then Oppo and Vivo came. No, no. Nowadays, if you visit any retail shop, right, so they are going to most probably kill you. Oppo and Vivo sales executives, they'll force you to buy Oppo and Vivo. And they, they'll produce it uh, before you in such a manner that you'll say, oh, Oppo is better than an iPhone. I'll end up buying Oppo and Vivo for why are they doing that because Oppo and Vivo have been able to create a very strong distribution network you cannot say only I am going to earn let everyone around uh, you earn 
they're going good they're doing uh, good and they're giving good profit to this the retailers to wholesalers to stockists to distributors and maximum to retailers and what they have done they are paying their their sales executives are on uh, job you know they are on rolls they are paying them salaries plus they are paying them incentives so uh, the company uh, you know actually uh, oppo and vivo company oppo vivo realme and oneplus they say oneplus is their premium brand it belongs to a single company single company owns oppo uh, vivo and and also the one plus so let me show you company oppo oppo vivo company name right so let me google it uh, maybe it is gmd international or gbm international i don't know uh, or okay bbk electronics corporations bbk electronics oppo vivo is manufactured by uh, oneplus is also you can see oppo vivo and realme and oneplus belongs to bbk international now see how they are positioning their brands they are positioning oppo for lower class vivo for middle class and oneplus they say is their premium brand now realme is coming up also so but uh, hardly anyone knows that uh, they are you know uh, they are they are siblings rather realme oppo vivo and oneplus right okay and you can create a very strong distribution network let everyone earn you'll end up earning as well but yeah you need to have a very very good economies of scale produce it uh, you know on a large scale right exclusive right selling products exclusively uh, so being exclusive is always good for example if i spot my claim and now i do not have high capital investment like jio uh, did high capital investment initially uh, and i still want to do create monopoly what i'll do i'll do good research and spot the claim in the market and maybe some some products that are being sold in usa in thailand in china and in some other countries and you'll say you know i need to introduce certain product like in winters everyone is crying for heaters and we do not have heaters those heaters up to the mark uh, you know if you have gas heater it gives you headache it gives you high bp right if you have electric heater it it takes too much of energy you know you have to pay high power bills and if you have some other heater it may cause smoke and pollution inside the house and inside the rooms so you'll have to see an alternative you search for an alternative and then the moment you find an alternate you say no i am going to distribute it in kashmir in jammu and kashmir or maybe in entire india but you go to the company you say hey i am going to take it but i have uh you know you need to give me an exclusive right to sell right in this area there should not be any one other than me selling the same product now the moment you get exclusive right of that product you are the only one selling you can sell it at any price now rest depends on your marketing team how better you are making people aware about your 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 product the moment everything goes fine now you are the price decider you cannot offer discount sell it on cash and get success and philip card 70% exclusive market and amazon initially had 30% exclusive market which means uh, you know that uh, what that show me right uh, mi phones they were first launched exclusively on philip card right so philip card takes uh, mobile phones and they, they philip card is basically an exclusive market uh, there are certain companies right uh, you know those companies launch Uh, products using flipkart exclusively and flipkart also takes exclusive that you are not going to launch it in uh, using some other electronic commerce platform right launch it uh, on flipkart other than any other e-com platform economies of scale is already discussed selling in a large quantity when you sell in large quantity you purchase raw material in large quantity when you purchase raw material in large quantity you get discount for the last bit as well so high capital investment you already know you can do high capital investment in the market to create monopoly like jio did to 25 lakh crore yeah 25 lakh crore rupees uh, invested by jio and proprietary technology if you can own proprietary technology like microsoft right so which is again not impossible but yeah a bit hard excellent customer service introduces uh, sorry industry 60% of market share now dominos has 60% of the market share in uh, the pizza industry and uh, excellent customer service has proven that it has already created monopoly in the industry 
you know that tana na 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 you know that what was it tana na 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 pizza i free i don't remember that uh, sound you need to help me with that right okay uh, so that created monopoly in the industry that means not only high capital investment economies of scale strong distribution network exclusive rights and patents no also ex- excellent customer services can create monopoly in the market and uh, i just uh, okay uh, the second point about dominos was i still remember they created another campaign uh, and that campaign was tweet to order and tweet to order you know it worked like like anything right everyone used to tweet and they used to get pizza in 30 minutes that was another example you know creativity marketers are creative people right they are not dumb dull and lazy people they are very creative people right so their brain doesn't sleep right so they are very creative people so you need to have that creativity because because if you go to a company and say hey you have a company i'm going to take your company from 10% to 20% right and will you be able to pay me 10 lakh rupees salary oh owner will say 20% okay only when you take my company to 20% only then i'll pay okay you'll say okay if you're confident enough get up you know know your business know how to take business because business is done with masses and those masses can be b2b business to business business to customer business to government all are people you are not dealing with uh, monsters right or animals you're dealing with people okay so as long as you understand their behavior so you'll be able to sell anything right unless anything to anyone know anything to the right customer right and and recognizing the right customer is that what we do okay point number 8 brand equity i have already told you if i say thanda matlab you'll say coca cola if i say uh, what is that uh, washing powder you'll say nirma if i say uh, adesi you'll say favicol and if i say noodles you'll say maggi for able to create this brand awareness and and you get equity in the industry right so that's also going to get monopoly point number 9 uh, is the last point loyalty beyond logic if you are able to create that you know target a specific religion right so hamdard uh, never target but the name looks as that of muslim name so hamdard uh, i don't know they're having loyalty with the uh, muslims muslims are having loyalty with hamdard and hindus are having loyalty with patanjali so that's not because of any big brand names right so they can they can they can market uh, that uh, you know what do you call that gao motra and every single thing and and hindu people they love it right but muslims maybe not right so muslims maybe uh, they think that hamdard has something hal i don't know i'm just giving an examples that loyalty beyond logic is there muslims for hamdard and patanjali for hindus there may be some hindus taking hamdard there may be some muslims taking patanjali i do not have idea about those things right but yeah giving examples is my job so that's uh, that's what i'm doing for you so uh, these are the things a uh, very easy you'll say oh i can create monopoly i told you marketing is very easy to teach and learn but very difficult to execute not impossible okay the last but not the least growth hacking case study of jio Uh, this case study has been done everywhere right so i mean everyone is aware of that i'm just going to give you an overview of you know what happened and how it happened because i told you uh, geo did uh, you know high capital investment and what was the investment investment was <laughs> around 2.5 lakh crore rupees okay now so let's see each and every company be it idea be it airtel be it vodafone be it aircel Uh, right be tata they were all crying for voice 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 why because they had a reason to cry for voice 60 to 70% of revenue used to come from 70% of revenues coming from voice so they had to do improve and do whatever they could you know in 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 spending only for voice data was already there but they were charging much for data you know we had to wait till 10 pm or 11 pm to download songs right and and that is fair social needs and the consumer needs were understood by jio they said you start crying for their voice and you do not stop keep on keep on crying for voice 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 and voice so i'll sell data now it was not easy for jio to come now it's very easy now for you to think and go through this case study but for jio it was not easy to come because the market was already saturated 
everybody had one two three sim cards right at this time maybe those who are watching might have two sim cards still it is saturated everyone has two and three sim cards but geo changed the perception geo changed the view of the people what geo did he said okay you're selling voice but you're making people wait for data right beta i am now going to sell data and enter the saturated market and imagine that's what i say it did not enter Uh, any other market but the market which was already saturated and created monopoly in the saturated market by high capital investment of rupees 2.5 lakh crore rupees and it's because of investment of 2.5 lakh crore rupees jio created an uh, entry barrier right airtel voda and other companies were still spending money on old technology now i have an idea of airtel Airtel had just introduced maybe eight months before or nine months before. Airtel had just introduced new technology in 3G. They had spent more money on 3G, updating their towers and servers and each and everything. It was not easy for Airtel to go for 4G at that time, and Jio hit this spot right at the right time, and. it was not easy for other companies to get adapted or to, or to update the technology easily right i still remember 2016 agitation in jammu and kashmir and i went to bakshi kashmir uh, bakshi stadium kashmir and 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 what i found there you know queues and queues and queues you know long long queues of people uh, waiting for jio why kyun le rahe ho free hai bhai it's uh, we are getting it free we are getting it free and not only sim card is free we had data free <coughs> data till march is free that no no by that time they said data till december is free that means you, as much internet as you can use use it and that too on 4g speed and it is free so people rush to buy jio right so they 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 rush to buy jio and 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 jio uh, went out of the stock the sim cards went out of the stock and then they manufactured it uh, you know on a large scale right and created entry barriers now see uh, what happened and let's imagine 120 crore people in india right so because uh, it is jio had acquired 80% market of 120 crore people in india 105 crore mobile connections some may have one some may have two is there any room for voice no recognized you know that's why spot the claim and amplify the message jio spotted the claim in data right lots and lots of room in data jio spotted the claim and amplified the message once you say free you don't have to go for any ad word of mouth you know, i repeat a word of mouth is spread like anything word of mouth is virus it spreads more faster than covid right uh, so it's virus right so once anyone i mean so once i heard something is free not only sim card is free but the data is free till december it is free maybe 6 months let us enjoy i i i you know everyone in my family came to know i i i went to my friend told my friend insisted my friend to buy and again uh, the cycle went very big who would have thought that telecom industry in 21st century will run on data connections the mota by ambani and uh, how because uh, uh, mota by ambani jio is the first company to have launched um, the lte long term evolution and voltee voice over lte phones right uh, sorry say, uh, you know technology in india okay what happened one aadhar card eight sim cards not only jio was the first mover jio was the fast mover as well one aadhar card take eight sim cards with an activation speed earlier of 24 hours and now digital activation process takes only 15 minutes you know you call and say you call jio sales executive i require jio number he is going to come to you along with the fingerprinting machine and take your aadhar card immediately take your fingerprints and give you the sim card by the time he returns back the sim card is already activated and you can get eight sim cards using one aadhar card and that was uh, how jio uh, you know spread that word of mouth right i i got it for my entire family i got eight sim cards for my entire family we call it loss leading strategy of jio 
right? So let us calculate now. Ambani took 80% of the market share. Let me give you the brief about this. Uh, once they said uh, the free policy is going to end in December, and in December when Geo checked, they had acquired 60% of the market share. And they said, we are not going to get settled for 60% market share because they said the moment you get settled for less than you deserve, you get even lesser than what you are settled for. They said, no, 60% is very less. Let us extend the period till March. So extended the free internet till March and, and in March, they extended it maybe till May, June, and in June they find uh, they found 80% uh, of the market share has already been acquired. And what Geo did did not acquire new customers. Geo acquired customers of ASL, customers of Idea, customers of Reliance, customers of other uh, communication like BSNL, MTNL, Cell One. Uh, the ac acquisition was as that of other companies as. Well, and let us say 80% of, of 105 crore mobile users in India, not a joke. And that is how much? 80% of 105 crore rupees, not rupees, 80% of 105 crore is almost 105 crore mobile users is almost, <coughs> let us take only 50 crore. Let us not take only 105 crore, let us take 50 crore with an average billing cycle of 200 per month. That means 10,000 crore per month was the profit of Geo, right? 1.25 lakh crore rupees per year. So that is only I'm taking 50 crore, not 105 crore. So the actual profit would have been somewhere near to 2.5 lakh crore rupees per year. Pura net worth hil gaya unka. And, and what happened after that, you know, exit barrier became more stronger with loss leading strategy because they were giving it free they were applying something known as bullet and gun strategy right so they applied that strategy known as bullet and gun strategy what geo did enter the saturated market created monopoly airtel is now struggling and is fighting hard there's no exit and no entry for competitors they didn't leave exit for their it was not only the entry barrier it was also the exit barrier because the companies who were already who had already invested so much like airtel had invested so much in 3g technologies they could hardly think of announcing bankruptcy right so they kept on fighting hard and hard yeah they removed many employees and uh, this is also known as market penetration strategy penetrated the saturated market okay so i was talking of bullet and gun strategy bullet and gun strategy means geo gave you uh no you know they gave you sim card free when everyone said okay we are getting free sim cards hip hip hooray then they said we are getting free data till december hip hip hooray two hip hip hoorays when they went back home and inserted the same sim card inside their mobile phones what they found? They found that it's not working. The mobile phone was not Volti ready. VOLT was not, uh, they were not having VOLT. By that time, Geo had already launched LYF. Then my, we used to go to mobile shops and say, okay, we require a Volti phone. And now where is free? Instead of paying 200, 300 for a SIM card, you have paid 7,000 rupees, 8,000 rupees to buy LYF mobile phone just to run 4G connections. That is as good as I giving you printer worth 1,000 rupees free. And that you are very happy someone has given me printer fee. But where are you going to get cartridge from? I know that I am the only one selling cartridge to you. So that is called as bullet and gun strategy and loss leading strategy as well. And despite of having loss leading strategy, you happen to earn almost 2.5 crore rupees profit. 2.5 lakh crore rupees profit in the first year. All right. Now the topic for today. Today we are going to discuss success. I want you to rock the group or the comment section. Please define, do not copy, do not Google. Please tell me what your mind says, what success is, what is success, as easy as anything. What is success? That's it. Please answer in the comment section or we can have a nice discussion using WhatsApp group. Okay, define brand equity, how to create monopoly, how to create monopoly in PC, what is PC? right in perfect competition uh, and what is a brand i require you to answer these things please answer them in the comment section i repeat now you need to acknowledge it you need to uh, basically encourage your instructors despite of you knowing that your instructors are not sitting in front of you to check your accuracy your attention in the class you're they're not we need to be sure that our class is uh, you know as as attentive as it is uh, you know in a classroom 
online i cannot see you guys but what you need to do is encourage me for creating better content for you guys that's only going to happen when you do as i say please answer them comment section may not whatsapp group only in the comment section what is brand equity how to create monopoly your idea not any definition <clears throat> how to create monopoly in uh, uh, perfect competition and what is a brand right comment section please answer do not describe only define three to four lines max right take your time 24 hours you have 24 hours to answer one two three four questions i repeat answer all four questions this is going to encourage us create better content this is going to give me a smile at least okay fine which of the following are true in monopoly please tell me a monopolist can set price and output now how can a monopolist set output the monopolist can make uh, super normal profits in the short and okay i don't know you tell me the answers right uh, the monopolist can make super normal profits in the short run and long run the demand curve of the firm and the market are the same the monopolist will always have super normal profits the mono i think it can be the the monopolist protects their position through barriers to entry a monopolist uh, will always produce where the demand curve is okay one thing is there which of the following are true in monopoly right so are true which of the following they can be more than one right okay let's see oh no that's not right the monopolist can either set price or output not both uh, no that's not right the monopolist can make super normal profits in both the short run and the long run thanks to barriers to entry see that's not right the monopolist faces the market demand curve yes it faces d is right i told you e no that's not right barriers to entry enable the firm protect their super normal profits in long run f yes that is correct okay i was also wrong the monopolist will always produce uh, right uh, on the section of the demand curve but how is it what is this inelastic so is it is basically is elastic right maybe okay let's see uh, yes d is also correct i told you d is also correct uh, though a monopolist can make super normal profits these are not guaranteed okay all right so that ends the session let me know in the comment section or let me know in the whatsapp section and please and please and please and please answer all the questions that i've asked uh, so that'll make me happy and uh, we'll also ensure your uh, support and uh, your attention in the class right so bye bye take care